Hello, my name is, um, I don't remember, but it's a good thing we have hard drives nowadays to help with memory storage. Today we are going to be talking about hard drives and the structure, processing, and properties of the materials that make a hard drive function. Hard drives have served as the main method for storing information in both computers and data centers since their creation. Without these storage devices, computers would have no way to function and be of no use. Hard drives have seen an immense increase in data density over the years. In 1956, a 5 megabyte hard drive sold for $10,000 per megabyte and was the size of two refrigerators. Today, two terabyte hard drives sell for only three and a half cents per gigabyte and can be held in your hand. While hard drives are no longer at the forefront of technology in laptops, they are still widely used in data centers and for storing large amounts of data. Hard drives are easily editable and can store information for long periods of time without being corrupted, making them still widely used today. The hard drive is composed of three main components, the plotter, the actuator arm, and the read-write head. The read-write head sits at the end of the actuator arm, which moves to import data into the plotter. The plotter is the most important part since it is where the data is actually stored. Next, we will discuss the parts that make up the platter. There are four main layers that the platter is composed of. Starting from the bottom, a blank aluminum disc, or more recently glass, is used as a base. Then a chromium layer is added on top, which is followed by the magnetic layer where all the data is actually stored. Lastly, the entire plate is covered in a carbon overcoat for protection. First, we are going to discuss the magnetic layer, but in order to understand the workings of this layer, one first needs to understand how a magnet works. Magnetism begins on the atomic scale. When an electron spins, it creates a magnetic moment. In most materials, these magnetic moments point in many different directions, resulting in no net magnetic field. However, ferromagnets are different than most materials. In a ferromagnet, all of the magnetic moments in a domain are lined up in the same direction. However, there is still no net magnetic field since each domain points in a different direction. In ferromagnets, when an external magnetic field is applied, the most favorable domain in line with this magnetic field will grow and eventually take over the whole material. This results in an overall net magnetic field which is maintained even when the external magnetic field is removed. The ferromagnetism is what gives a certain material the magnetic properties that we normally think of. The magnetic layer of the hard drive is the most important layer and is normally made of a cobalt alloy. Cobalt is one of the only naturally occurring ferromagnets, along with other more common materials such as nickel and iron. As discussed previously, cobalt's ability to acquire a magnetic field and maintain that magnetic field is why it is used for hard drives today. The magnetic layer is broken up into concentric circles called tracks where the actual information is stored. Each track is about 200 to 200 nanometers wide. Each track is then broken up into sectors, which extend about 25 to 30 nanometers down the track. Originally, the sectors are unorganized groups of magnetic domains with no order, but as the hard drive spins and the read-write head moves over a sector, it applies an external magnetic field to the sector. This external magnetic field changes the magnetic orientation of the sector in a way that the data can be stored. Since a computer does not just store data in the form of words, but rather in a collection of ones and zeros, this sector will either be in a north-south orientation representing a one, or a south-north orientation representing a zero. This magnetism will be maintained even once the electromagnet has been removed, making this a very useful, non-volatile storage device. Once the information is written on the disk, the read-write head can then go over that sector once again and use the magnetic field to either read it as a one or a zero. The aluminum disk is the base of the platter, and it is usually between 0.6 millimeters and 1.8 millimeters thick. When it is produced, the aluminum must be rolled out very carefully to ensure that it is as smooth as possible. The aluminum is polished to an extremely fine finish. This is very important because if there are any irregularities, the process of reading and writing to the disc may be disrupted. A thin layer of chromium is added on top of the aluminum blank right below the magnetic layer. This helps to reduce cobalt's susceptibility to interactions between the magnetic fields of the sectors in that layer. The magnetic layer is then added, followed by a 2 nanometer thick carbon overcoat. This carbon allotrope is very hard, offering protection against scratching to the surface of the disc. Any abrasion to the disc, and more specifically the magnetic layer, could result in a significant amount of data loss, 
making this carbon overcoat important to the functioning of the hard drive. Hard drives used to store data in the form of longitudinal magnetic recording, where the magnetic field traveled down the track in the horizontal direction. There is a limit to the data density of this method, since as the magnetized areas become smaller, they require less energy to flip their magnetization. This makes it more probable that fluctuations in temperature can result in unwanted flipping and loss of data. Hard drives now use perpendicular magnetic recording, where the magnetic field either points into or out of the disk, rather than along the disk. This allows for sectors to be closer together on the track, resulting in a higher data density. This advanced data storage method is made possible by the unique structure of cobalt, the metal used in the magnetic layer. Cobalt has a simple hexagonal crystal structure. Since this crystal has a structure where it is much longer in one direction, cobalt's ability to hold and maintain a magnetic field without being altered is better than other materials. It is important for the magnetic layer to be made of a material that can both hold a magnetic field without flipping, but also be able to be changed when the read-write head applies an external field. Cobalt offers a good balance between these two requirements. Each aspect of the hard drive reiterates a common theme in the field of material science. Structure, processing, and properties are all related. Each layer of the platter was chosen for its specific properties. For example, cobalt in the data layer was chosen for its distinct ma magnetic properties, which are due to its crystal structure and organization on the atomic scale. The magnetic layer is then processed by the read-write head by manipulating the orientation of the magnetic field to store information. Each material and its properties are vital and contribute to the functioning of the hard drive. When all of these aspects come together, data can be written and read at amazing speeds. A hard drive disk spins at speeds up to 10,000 revolutions per minute, and the read-write head can move up to 60 times per second. This is the same video now in slow motion. The many facets of hard drives are not only interesting to material scientists, they are beneficial to society as a whole. The amount of information that hard drives can store is increasing at an incredible speed. Research is currently being done to increase storage capacity to incomprehensible quantities. In particular, researchers are looking into capacities in the range of dom gradabyte. One dom gradabyte is equal to one quadrillion terabytes. To put things into perspective, one terabyte of data can hold enough data to play music uninterrupted for two years. Given our current storage needs, the storage capacity of hard drives of the future will essentially be unlimited.